Hey guys, what's up? It is Nathan here, and I am beyond excited to be doing a video that I have been wanting to do for a long time on a set that I have wanted for a long time. This is my review of the Lego Indiana Jones Temple of the Crystal Skull from 2008. So yeah, this set has been on my list for a very, 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 very long time. Uh, this is a set that was released as part of the Indiana Jones line, uh, which was spanned through 2008 and 2009. Uh, this was the highlight set for the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, uh, as well as one of the biggest sets that was released as a part of that particular theme. So, if you don't know me by now, you know I love the Indiana Jones sets, but I've never actually reviewed one on my channel. So, I figured I got a few sets, and so what way to ring in 2023? Like, doing a couple of reviews on these 15-year-old sets. So... I guess let's start off with the minifigures. So the first figure that we have is, of course, Indiana Jones. Uh, he's a very iconic figure. Um, he's got the satchel piece. He's got the fedora piece that was uh, actually specifically made for this theme. He's also has He also has the whip as well as the revolver that LEGO doesn't make anymore, which makes me uh, very sad. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, though. I could be wrong. I just haven't seen it in a very long time. Uh, the face and the torso and the legs are all really, really nice. Um, he's got no back printing. Um, he, it's an old figure from, you know, the late 2000s, so he doesn't have back printing and he doesn't have a dual-sided face. But it, he's still a really nice figure, and I actually think that he holds up pretty well today, all things considered. Um, the next figure, uh, kind of holds up well, um, kind of doesn't, depending on what part of him you're talking about, and this is, of course, Mutt Williams, played by, uh, Shia LaBeouf, and he's got a leather jacket, he's got, uh, dark blue legs, he's got, um, a knife, of course, in the movie, it's a switchblade, but... That's beside the point. Um, the torso is really nice. He's also got uh, fairly common hair, and of course this head. Um, no back printing and no double-sided head, but he's still a decent figure, I guess. He also came in the, I believe, the Jungle Duel set, and then he also came in another set, I believe. So, the next figure, oh, sorry, Indy, the next figure uh, very much has not held up well, and this is, of course, Irina Spalco, played by uh, Kate Blanchett. And she's got a cutlass, um, of course, in the, in the film, it was a rapier, um, but that's, she does not have one um, in the set. And then she has a very simplistic torso, um, she's got a bob cut, which was also released on a couple of other figures in that time period, like Dynamite. Um, it was just in red. And so the Arena Spalco figure is meh. Um, the face is what really does not hold up well. Um, it's just not the same kind of face that, um, people... Uh, Lego characters have in uh, the modern age, but this was again 2008 or 2009. I actually can't remember when the set came out. Um, as her backup, we got a, a Russian soldier. Uh, didn't know Belloc was a Russian soldier, but here we are. Um, and of course, the fun thing about these sets, or not so fun depending on how you look at it, um, from a history perspective, I really like that. Uh, they released uh, German soldiers and Russian soldiers in these sets, and in this, and in particular, this soldier is supposed to be a Russian soldier. Um, in the movie, he was a Soviet, um, and so this is a very interesting figure. Um, 
and they also released they also have like vaguely realistic weapons so it's really interesting um but he has his uh rifle and he's got a uh kepi cap which has come in a lot of different colors but has since kind of run out of favor with lego for some reason probably because of this theme um but next are the two uga warriors um they're exactly the same except one of them has the lucius malfoy hair uh in black and that hairpiece i believe is no longer used i could be wrong but the rest of them are very simple. They're actually pretty well detailed, especially for 2008 standards. Um, and the front of their torso, that is. The back torso, they don't have anything, but they do have back head printing, which is actually pretty cool. So the Ugo Warriors are pretty cool. And then the one last figure, there's actually three more figures, but they're in the structure. Um, the other figure technically is this uh, Conquistador uh, skeleton. Um, it's got the old style of skeleton legs and the actually old style body as well. Um, it's got a conquistador cap as well as a silver uh, chest plate. And it's actually a pretty cool figure. It's also got the old style uh, skeleton head uh, that looks kind of evil. Um, and you'll be seeing uh, at least one more of those skeleton heads um, later in this video. So let's start with the two builds uh, that you build before you get to the actual Akator Temple, uh, which are, of course, the little walk, the gate, as well as this little uh, tank thing. So let's start with the tank thing because it was... It's interesting, I guess. Um, it's, it's a tank, I guess. Um, you have space for one minifigure to kind of go in here. Um... In this case, it's I believe it's supposed to be the Russian soldier dude, um, Soviet Balak. He can uh, go in there and kind of sit down and pilot the tank. Um, there's no room for his weapon, but you can kind of just put it behind him. Uh, it's cool, I guess. It's a, definitely a tank, and it rolls pretty well. Um, but it's not the main draw of the set, of course. And then the other thing is, of course, this gate. It is actually very nice uh for using a surprisingly uh high amount of pieces it's actually pretty cool um it's got some spikes up here which are actually flick missiles um and it, the flick missiles are the eyes um but there's a reason we don't use flick missiles anymore uh because they suck and so they're fine here because they're like a part of the build um the other thing you can do which not many people point out, is you can actually just put one of the Uga Warriors up there so we can, like, spy and chill out. Maybe uh, sip, sip a Mai Tai, I don't know. Um, but this is a very, very cool build, um, and it's a really nice, like, just random side build. You can also, I realized, put it, like, right here, um, and it actually makes the temple look uh, slightly a bit more complete, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, so moving those out of the way, let's get to the actual structure. So the structure itself is actually kind of difficult to move around because it's really interesting. Um, and it's, it's a big structure. It's built on a raised base plate, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they don't make these, uh, anymore. And so it's a really interesting build and it's a big build considering the fact that it was only $80 back in the day. Um, but there's a couple things that I would like to point out here. Um, starting out with the fact that there's a piece missing. It is right, it's supposed to be right there, and it is not there. So hang on. There we go. Now it's fine. Um, I'm sure that won't be the first case of missing pieces, because I did get the set used, um, and I'm sure I probably missed something. So first of all, Let's start with the front. So there's a couple of different things. First of all, there's these staircases. Um, let's pick uh, Mutt as our guinea pig, because no one likes Mutt. Um, and let's put him on the staircase. So let's say he's just uh, walking up or walking down, and, and they all fall, and Mutt just fell on the floor. Um, maybe that's what happens to him in Indy 5. I don't know. Um, but... 
that's a really interesting play feature. It seems very old fashioned, very old school. You could also, I'm sure you could probably just put the contista door back there. And that's the other problem uh, with this play feature is it's kind of, it's kind of easy to activate. Um, but it was an old feature and it was, and it does work really well. Um, it sometimes just works a little too well. Um, the other thing that's really cool about the front is that you can actually remove this, although I'm not going to, you know what? I don't, I don't even care anymore. I'm just going to put those over there. Um, but you can't actually remove it even though I'm not going to. Um, and this is all built, like I said, on a raised base plate. So it's very interesting. Um, the other thing that's really cool, if I can move this around, is that there's an entire ex interior. There's an exterior and there's also an interior. Um, it's actually really cool, and there is supposed to be a place right here where you can you are told to put the uh, skeleton. He's just kind of chilling, um, but this is a really cool kind of, sort of build. There's another feature. Uh, in the front though, which I can actually show you better from here. Um, if I can zoom, there we go. Um, this is probably the first time I've used the actual zoom like for a particular purpose. Um, there's supposed to be extra skeleton heads, um, but I cannot seem to find them. So I'm just gonna use this random head um, from I believe this was from Gar Saxon, but you're supposed to, when you build this, there's these little tiny things, uh, there's these little dragon heads, and this just died. Okay, uh, see the problem with building a set from 2008? Um, so you're supposed to put the uh, head or something in here, um, and then you shut this, and then it can fall on the enemy. I am not going to do it. That seems like a little bit of a waste of time currently. But I am going to show you another feature here. So this is actually a really cool feature. Unfortunately, uh, there was a mistake in the shipping process, and they did not ship me a, the right component for this. So that made me sad, but it, it, it works well enough. Um, so... You can push this up. It actually works better if you just do this. Um, and what you're supposed to do, if you have the right angled uh, piece for this, when, when it does that, is it's supposed to fall down as a little trap, um, which is actually really cool. So if you have someone like Indiana Jones, uh, you can dodge that trap. And then you can also just reset it like that. Um, and hopefully I can get the piece in time um, to re redo that bit so it actually works. Um, and then the other thing is Indiana Jones, when you, um, there's a thing here, more flick missiles, great. Um, but when you, let me see if I can zoom in. So as I was saying, um, when you, put someone in front of these little flick missiles here and you can just say arena spalco um there's this little wheel here along with the cool ass waterfall so what happens is you can try and uh kill arena spalco um or anybody you would like to kill um should use shia labeouf again um but we that is a very, very cool feature. Um, the problem is, is that I have trouble finding the flick missiles afterwards because they have a tendency to fall on the floor. Um, there's one. Um, and then I don't know where the other one went. Um, but then the other thing is there is a zoom out. So there is a cool little staircase that kind of revolves, and there's also a spiked pit under there. So someone could fall to their death, which is cool and morbid for a Lego set, but it's Indiana Jones, what do you expect? Um, the other thing that's cool here is you can have Indiana Jones. Of course, he's uh, 
supposed to be bringing the crystal skull, but it is currently on uh, those gentlemen over there. So I am going to keep that there. Um, but the idea is that he would put up the crystal skull to this and then the crystal skull uh, would activate the door so he could go come into the uh, this area which is arguably the weirdest part of the set because it first of all it wasn't uh, where it was supposed to be um, it has moved but this is of course the area where they finally return the skull to the uh, alien uh, or the interdimensional being um, so that is interesting and then you can pull this little rod and they could spin it's so cool um, I know in the uh, Raiders of the Lost Brick and a couple of the other um, a couple of the other interesting parts of this uh, the marketing for this set, uh, you see Mutt and uh, Irina Spalco dueling over here, and then, like, Irina Spalco falls into the void uh, under there, which has a sticker um, that actually has, like, the void, if you can see that. Um, and that's pretty neat, actually. And, like, in all honesty, that's actually pretty cool. Um, there's also a little area here that has a gem, um, so our treasure hunters cannot go away, uh, or, uh, leave empty-handed, uh, which is cool. Um, so, yeah, this set is very interesting. Um, there's, uh, and there's other details that are not really meant to be explored. For example, there's this little area, uh, down here which I can lower the tripod. There's a little area um, where Mutt can get killed by a snake, maybe. I don't know. Um, and he can... Or he can uh, lure his dad in there and his dad can get killed by a snake. I don't know. I don't know the plot of ND5. Um, but it's a very interesting set. Um, it's a very weird set, I should say. Um, it's a very fun, it's a very fun set. Um, it's got some cool action features, and, I mean, it's definitely a cool set for 2008 standards. Especially for $80. Um, this is a very, very, uh, good set for $80. Um, the problem is it's not $80 anymore. But more on that in a bit. Um, so, okay. yeah. So this set is a very interesting set. It's got a lot of play value for uh, kids and a lot of, uh, I would say, a lot of good, decent display value for adults, especially if you grew up with this set. Um, there's a lot of interesting parts of it. And there's a, a decent selection of minifigures, um, but... Yeah, so without further ado, let's move on to the final verdict. So I definitely had the uh, nostalgia goggles on when I got this set, and I definitely do think that for, especially for nostalgic fans of that theme, because I don't know about you, but Indiana Jones is probably one of my favorite themes of all time, if not my favorite theme of all time. Um, it and Agents are probably tied. Uh... I really loved both of those themes, and I love I love Indiana Jones, and I love Agents. Um, see, the reason this set is so hard to judge for me is not that the fact that it is so bad or the fact that it is so good. It is that it's a very it is a very good set, but it is actually not. It, it is very expensive on uh, the aftermarket getting this set uh, used or especially new. This set uh, fetches a lot of money. I was uh, fortunate enough to find it for a pretty decent price from Canada. Um, it was actually not a terrible price. Um, but it was still pretty expensive, um, like all Indiana Jones sets are. 
and so it was it was a good amount of money but on ebay you know it can fetch anywhere from two hundred dollars to three hundred dollars used or even more or if you want it new um it can fetch a way more money than that um i've seen it go for you know five hundred dollars six hundred dollars uh, brand new so um that's a lot um but if you can find it for a reasonable price but you know the the two the two to 250 range it might actually not be bad especially if you're uh nostalgic for it or if you're an indiana jones fan like i am um i think this set's actually pretty cool uh it was i missed <coughs> whoops <coughs> i'm getting i'm getting over a cold um but i missed out on all but one of the indiana jones sets when i got into lego because i got into lego uh in 2009 and the only uh set i actually got was the ambush in cairo um i did not get this set i didn't even see this set in theater or in uh stores so this set is really really cool and I'm really happy to own it. Um, it is a very nice set, and I'm really happy with it. So with that being said, I would like to thank you all very much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment what your favorite Indiana Jones set is and what you think of this set, and I will see all of you guys later. Bye!